Blessed be the Lord God Almighty who reigns forevermore. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty God, the Most High God, the only potentate. The Bible says you alone have immortality. You dwell in a light that no man can approach unto. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Lord, we worship you at this time. We reverence you. All glory, all honor be to you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mercies that endure it forever. Thank you for your grace. And thank you, Lord, for another time in your presence, another Sunday, another time for tender hearts link, another time to hear your word, another time to be blessed by you, another time of encouragement, another time of transformation, another time of empowerment. Lord, we give you glory in Jesus' name. We give you glory, we give you honor in Jesus' name. This is not about anyone, lest anyone should boast. This is about you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you do what only you can do. I pray, Lord, that you minister to as many as will join the program and as many as may watch later. Lord, minister to them in the mighty name of Jesus. And as many as have left everything they are doing to join the program, I pray, Lord, that you will minister to them. Let them know that, yes, indeed, they have been blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Encourage your people, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, because of time, we'll just go into what we have for today and uh, we'll trust God that others will join us. Jesus, your name is life. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is might. Your name is sight. Your name is all that we need. Lord, we worship and adore you. We thank you. We give you glory. Again, thank you for as many as are on the line already and as many as we join, as many as we watch later. Lord, prove yourself strong on their behalf. Minister to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Prove yourself strong on their behalf. Help them. Let them know that they have come into your presence. They have been here already. Lord, we pray that all will be well. Give them testimonies to your glory. Do what only you can do in the lives of your people, whether single or married. Prove yourself strong on their behalf. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, wherever you are watching from. I am Pastor Taiwo Iredele Odubi, and this is Tender Hearts Link. You are welcome to Tender Hearts Link. It's an online program for Christian singles and couples. In the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 22, um, an angel told Daniel, and told he, he said that he had come to give Daniel skill and understanding. And that is what this program is all about. It is to give you divine skill and understanding concerning relationship, concerning marriage, concerning life, concerning ministry, concerning your work with God, to encourage you, to remind you of the things of God. And if you don't know them already, to teach you the things of God, to make you know more, to answer the questions that may be in, their, in your hearts, to make you know maybe that word that is missing in your life, that word that you need. And I want to encourage you, as much as possible, make sure that you are not distracted where you are. Make sure that um, you are not sleeping, you don't doze off. If it's possible, use video, show your face. So that you can be sure that, okay, I am here. I'm listening. If it's possible, show your face. Make sure that you are not distracted. So this is to give you divine skill and understanding. Not just about relationship. Not just about marriage. Because God is interested in all areas of our lives. Everything. Parenting. Finance. So from time to time, we are going to be hearing different things. But today, I'm going to be talking about five truths five hard truths about marriage and god will minister to you in jesus name all right so um as i already said i am pastor taiwo iredele Jubi, and uh, one of the scriptures we stand on here in tender heart sling is psalms 138 verse 8 psalms 138 verse 8 
It's a, I say it all the time and I will say it again for the benefits of those who may be joining us for the first time. It's important that you have the word of God that you are standing on. If you are trusting God for a miracle, whatever you are trusting God for, get scriptures and stand on them. The word of God works. The word of God is anointed. It is not an ordinary word. The name of Jesus is not an ordinary name. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So where you are, make sure that you are, you are following along and you are being blessed. So we are going to confess that scripture together. Psalms 138 verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord's mercy endureth forever. The Lord will not forsake the works of his hands and the Lord will not forsake me. The Lord will not forsake you in Jesus name. I want us to say it again. Confess that scripture where you are. Psalms 138 verse 8. Whatever you are trusting God for, maybe your marriage, maybe to get married, maybe concerning finance, maybe concerning your health, maybe concerning your child, maybe concerning ministry, whatever it is, get scriptures. More than one scripture. Because the Bible says, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, a fact shall be established. So get more than one. You can get three. Three scriptures. When I, was, when I got married, I did not conceive on time. And I got three scriptures. And I was confessing them round the clock. I would confess those scriptures in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. I would wake up in the middle of the night and confess them again. And then I made sure that I memorized those scriptures. I knew them by heart. So that even if I was in a car, or I was somewhere, or I was doing something, I, could, I, I didn't have to carry my Bible. I could confess them from my heart. Um, fear, your Lord, your word says, Fear not for you are with me. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. This is your word to me and all of that. And God answered my prayer. Did I conceive? Yes, I did. So the word of God works. And make sure that you are not discouraged. Make sure that you continue to come into God's presence. Make sure that you continue to hear words like this. Because the word of God is your life. The word of God is your life. You don't have a choice. And please don't sleep where you are. Concentrate and be blessed. So Psalms 138 verse 8. We'll confess it one more time. Psalms 138 verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord's mercy endures forever. The Lord will not forsake the works of his hands. And the Lord will not forsake me in Jesus' name. And I pray for you. The Lord will, does not forsake the works of his hands. He will not forsake you. He will help you in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to share the link to this program with your friends and loved ones. If you receive the link, share it with someone so that they can join and be blessed. Take notes. This program holds every Sunday, same time. Every Sunday, same time. If anyone contacts you asking you to transfer money to them to make a donation on behalf of Pastor Taiwo Iredele Ojibi to an orphanage or somewhere or so that you can be prayed for, I want you to know that it is not me. It has nothing to do with me. Or someone contacts you and tells you that um, uh, there's a group for cryptocurrency, whatever. I want you to know that that has nothing to do with me. Don't allow yourself to be scammed. If you have questions, send your, con uh, your questions to me on WhatsApp. This program is for one hour. I may not be able to take your question during the program, but if you send your question to me on WhatsApp, I will answer it the following Sunday as much as possible. Or sometimes I may just group all the questions together and answer them on a particular Sunday. So if you have questions at all or concern, send it on WhatsApp. God will, come, God will talk to you when you come into his presence. You are in God's presence. God is here. This program is to give you divine skill and understanding. And this program is ordained of God. So God will talk to you. Get your writing materials so that you can write God's instructions down. So that you can write scriptures down, whatever God says to you, so that, so that you can write them down. It's important. During service this morning, God was giving instructions to the singles during our sunday morning service god was giving instructions on what to do so when you come into god's presence god will talk to you make sure you are not distracted you listen and you are blessed 
and it's also important that you carry out God's instructions, of course. For singles, God wants you to have a, a relationship that will glorify Him. Make sure that you glorify God in your relationship. Because if you do things that are not right, the Holy Spirit will be grieved. And the Holy Spirit will move to a side. Unless you ask for forgiveness and you repent. If a person is living in sin, the Holy Spirit will move to a side. And that is, the relationship is exposed and anything can happen. You are not safe in such a relationship. So glorify God in your relationship. As a human being that can be, maybe you make a mistake, correct your mistake, correct yourself, get things right with God so that you can continue to work with the Holy Spirit. You cannot afford not to work, not to have the Holy Spirit involved in your relationship. God is your life. So glorify God in your relationship. And for those who are married, stay in your marriage. Put your trust in God unless your life is in danger. If your life is in danger and you live to save your life for the sake of your children, for the sake of your future, if you live to save your life, make sure that you don't jump into another relationship. People keep asking me that question. Oh, my, uh, their spouse has moved forward. Their, the spouse has moved on. The spouse has um, remarried or the spouse is uh, seeing another person and all of that. So can I move forward and all of that? You have to be careful. Don't do anything without hearing from God. Make sure that you allow God to lead you. It's not about what the other person is doing. It is about what God is telling you to do. Ask God, what should I do? And he will give you a word. God will never leave you stranded. He will give you a word. Be encouraged. Don't jump into another relationship because someone is doing something. Hear from God. God talks. In the Bible, the disciples of Jesus always asked him questions. And there was no time that Jesus did not answer them. Jesus answered all the questions. So when you ask him for direction, he will tell you. Praise God. So today, we are, the, we are going to be talking about five hard truths about marriage. And when we are talking about hard truths, we are talking about those truths that seem difficult to accept. Truths that seem difficult to accept. But if they are the truth, just put your trust in God and get ready to deal with them. For example, we age every day. We get older every day. That is the truth. It's a hard truth. It's a hard truth. I can still remember when my mother was celebrating, when she was celebrating her 50th birthday. My mother. I was young. How old was I? Um, maybe 10. When my mother celebrated her 50th birthday. I, will, I can still remember. But now my mother, she's gone. She died at the age of 90. And here I am today. So we are, going, we are growing older. That is a truth. It's a hard truth. It's a truth that seems difficult to accept. But put, when you put your trust in God and you know what to do, you deal with it. You confront the issue. And you handle it the best way. The right way. And you are showing God's glory. You are radiating God's glory. You are looking good. You are doing well against all odds. So we are talking about five hard truths about marriage that you need to know so that you can be well prepared and then so that you can know how to face them, how to deal with them, and you are doing well. We are talking about five hard truths and I want to also say that don't be afraid. Sometimes I hear some singles say they want to get married, but they, they say that, oh, when they think about marriage, they are afraid. When they think about marriage, they are afraid and things like that. And I wonder, why are you afraid? Afraid of what specifically? What are you afraid of? Why should you be afraid when you have Jesus? When you have the Holy Spirit, when you have the Word of God, when you have the blood of Jesus, what are you afraid of? Fear is not of God. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Fear is not in my dictionary. When fear comes, 
I recognize it and I deal with it. I deal with it. I command it to, to be, to be uh, uh, separated from me. I don't tolerate fear. I stand on the word of God. And I'm saying this today to encourage you. You should do the same. All right. So don't be afraid about the hard truths about marriage. Don't say, ah, what's going to happen? Ah, will I be able to cope? Yes, you will cope. Sometimes people talk about ministry. Ha, huh, will they be able to handle ministry and all of that? I am a woman. I am in ministry. And I am enjoying it. This is my calling. And I, and I give God glory. I'm enjoying it. I know that God is on my side. So if I can do it without being afraid, then why should you be afraid? Why should you be afraid about marriage, about ministry, about parenting? You will cope. All right? You will cope. You will be fine. You will be fine. Now, we are talking about five hard truths about marriage. Some of the things you will encounter in marriage. Some of the things you will encounter in marriage, what marriage is all about, and, the, and all of that. Let me give this as an example to start with. I am an, aside being a pastor, I am an author, and I have about 50 books, 50 published books, and I'm still writing. I'm writing now, and I hope that another one will be ready before the, uh, before the end of the year. Now, the truth is that writing also has some, there are some hard truths about writing. I'm writing, Pastor Taiwo is writing, I'm writing another one now. I just uh, published one. I published uh, a book, a, a novel about three weeks ago, and I'm, another one is on its way. But the truth is that there are some things about writing, some hard truths. Writing is not easy. But look at me. I'm doing well. And I'm enjoying it. And I'm saying that you can also do well in what God has called you to do. In marriage, in relationship. Don't let me hear you say again that, oh, I am afraid about marriage. Don't let it come out of your mouth. Because you will cope. Say it where you are. Say, I will cope in Jesus' name. Where you are. Say it to yourself. I will handle my marriage well. I will cope. In Jesus name God will be glorified in Jesus name and whatever God is asking you to do say it to yourself I will cope I will do it well in Jesus name I was giving the example concerning my writing I'm writing but there are some hard truths about writing for example as a writer that's what is known as writer's block where you want to write, but you don't know what to write. You don't feel inspired to write. There's a block, a kind of blockage. You are just blank. You don't know, you want to write, but you don't even know the next thing to write. But for me, I don't even use that word, writer's block. And I don't see writer's block affecting me. What people call writer's block, I just do what God is leading me to do. If I feel like, if I want to write, I write. If I don't feel inspired to write, I relax. I'm doing some other things. And while I'm doing some other things, I am praying and asking God to inspire me. Holy Spirit, I need to write. I have to finish this book by so-so time. But I don't know what to write again. Holy Spirit, lead me, minister to me. And I may be somewhere talking to someone and someone says something or I see something somewhere and I'm inspired. Oh, this is the next thing to write. The Bible says, do not, um, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 12, the Bible says, do not say it is a conspiracy. What people call a conspiracy, you are not to fear what they fear. So I don't fear what people fear. And so I'm, God is talking to you. Don't fear what people fear. You may see some marriages not working. That is not your business. Marriage is a good thing. That is what the Bible says. So believe the word of God. You don't know what happened in that, in that marriage. 
You don't know why the marriage is struggling. You don't know why the marriage collapsed. Don't worry yourself about it. Sometimes some people are looking at what they should not be looking at. What is not their business. Oh, some marriages are not working. Oh, I am afraid. Why should you be afraid? What is your business if some, if some marriages are not working? Focus on God. Don't say it's a conspiracy. What people are afraid of. Don't let it be your fear. Your own marriage will work. Say my marriage will work in Jesus' name. My marriage will work in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So I don't have writer's block. I just pray and um, very soon God inspires me. I pray. I relax. I eat. I enjoy myself. I, I do my ministry. And God, uh, the Holy Spirit begins to minister to me again. And I begin to write. So the same thing applies when it comes to marriage. There are some hard truths concerning marriage. But don't be afraid. All, what I do when I'm writing, the way I handle my things is the way you should handle it. I'm not perfect. So I'm not saying that I am perfect. But I'm pointing out some things that just... Put your trust in God. And as, as issues come up, rely on God. Ask God to help you. And you deal with it. People say, writer's block, writer's block. It has never come out of my mouth that, hey, I have write a writer's block. I don't. I don't. I don't expect it. It won't even come to me. Because I, am, I rely totally on the Holy Spirit. So the same thing applies concerning marriage. Marriage is a wonderful experience. Marriage is ordained of God. And the Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 22 that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains the Lord's favor. So that is, that is what you should focus on. And encourage the people around you to see marriage the same way. If they are talking about being afraid, tell them what are you afraid of? And God, if you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, God has not given you the spirit of fear. Just walk with the Holy Spirit. Follow the word of God. Surround yourself with the right people. And it's also important that you have the right pastor, the right church, where you will be hearing the, the right message, the right message that will encourage you, that will strengthen you. Because sometimes you may feel discouraged. But when you are hearing the right message, your strength is renewed. All right. So concerning marriage, sometimes people have unrealistic expectations concerning marriage. They think that marriage will, last, will settle everything for them. Will, that when they get married, that's it. Everything will be all right and all of that. But Sometimes challenges may come in marriage, but when you are working with God, when you are working with the Holy Spirit, you will be fine. Say, I will be fine in Jesus' name. I will be fine in Jesus' name. All right. Let's start this way. Let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. We read from verse 22. Let's read together. Ephesians chapter 5. We read from verse 22. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22. Alright, the Bible says, I'm reading the Amplified Version. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. Don't forget we are talking about some hard truths about marriage. And we are already seeing one of them now. The truth of the matter is that in marriage, the wife is supposed to be subject to her own husband. Your own husband. Submit to your own husband. Be subject to your own husband. Let me also say that you are sub in submitting to your husband, God expects you to submit biblically. That means you should submit the way God wants you to submit. To glorify God. That means you should not submit to your husband in a foolish way. That means you should not submit to your husband mindlessly, foolishly. You should submit biblically in a way that will glorify God. 
Sometimes I hear some wives do some, can I use the word, crazy things. Sometimes I hear some wives do some things that are foolish. For example, you can hear, you may hear that a wife uh, decides to do some money ritual uh, things for her, uh, for her husband because her husband asks her to do it. So, so she decides to do it. She decides to do money rituals so that her, her husband can be, can be rich and so that she can save her marriage and so that she can, um, they can be happy and all of that. That is submitting foolishly. That is wrong. And both of them are going to be destroyed together. That is not what we are talking about. And, or sometimes you may hear uh, a man, the, the man can tell the wife to leave where the church, where God planted them. The husband can say, something happened. I don't want us to go to that church again. And um, the wife is like, okay. Whatever my husband says, and she follows him. You are supposed to get help for your husband when he is going wrong. When he is going wrong, you are supposed to get help for him. So you are supposed to submit biblically. Now, we are talking about some hard truths. So we are seeing one here. Wives, be subject to your own husbands. Because sometimes some women, they struggle with submission. They struggle. Why, why should, do I have to submit? Well, this is the truth. This is uh, scriptural. It is in the Bible. It is what God wants. He wants order in the home. Just as God wants order in the church, He wants order in the home. Just as there is order in heaven, as it is being done in heaven, so He wants it to be done on earth. God wants order. So, wives, be subject to your own husband as a service to the Lord. As a service to the Lord, you are doing it to the Lord. When you submit to your husband, it's not actually your husband you are submitting to. You are submitting to God. When you submit to your pastor in church, take note if you are in the right church. It's important that you are in the right church because if you are in the wrong church, you will not fulfill your purpose, your divine purpose. You will not be, you can, you will not be able to become all that God wants you to become. But if, if you are in the right church, and you submit to your pastor. It is not the pastor you are actually submitting to. You are submitting to God. A service to God. So the next verse, verse 23. For the husband is head of the wife. As Christ is head of the church. Himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ. So also should be so also wives should be subject to their husbands in everything, respecting both their position as protector and their responsibility to God as head of the house. So the Bible is saying that, that the wife should submit to her husband in everything, respecting the husband's position as protector, which means the husband also has some work to do. The husband is supposed to be the protector of the wife, of the home. So because the husband is the protector, then you are supposed to honor that position. Submit to him. And then the Bible is saying that the husband is also doing what he's doing as a responsibility to God as head of the house. So if you are a man on the line and you are listening to me, the wife has her roles to play and you also have your roles to play. And it is it will be so wonderful if the husband fulfills his role. When the husband fulfills his role, it becomes easy for the wife to submit. It becomes easy unless the wife is foolish. When your husband is fulfilling his role, it becomes easy for the wife. I want to encourage all the men around. Or if, or if, you're, if you're a husband, if you're, if you're married and your husband is not here, or you are in a relationship and your man is not here or something on the line, you can share this um, video with, your, with, 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 with them. I will make it available later. When the, hus when the husband fulfills his role, it's, it, it becomes easy for the wife to, to do her own part, to fulfill her role. Anyway, let's move on because of time. I don't think I'll be able to finish on this uh, dealing with this topic today i may have to continue next sunday same time the next verse husbands love your wives 
seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring unselfish love just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so the Bible is talking about husbands now telling them their responsibility the husband is supposed to love his wife how should I love, love my wife how am I supposed to love her the Bible says seek the highest good for her seek the highest good what does it mean to seek I checked the dictionary seek means investigate pursue chase go after explore follow go after chase the highest good for your wife that is what the husband is supposed to do surround her with a caring or selfish love so many wives want to submit to their husbands but they are struggling they know the husband is wrong and the husband is saying yes i may be wrong but you must submit you must submit and <laughs> some men are so they are quick to say that word submit oh easy oh, oh easy for one any little thing submit submit and they are not and they are not submitted to god and that is the thing the husband is supposed to submit to god when he is submitted to God, the wife will know that, yes, my husband is submitted to God. And she will be able to submit to him. But many husbands, they struggle in submitting to God. They don't want to submit to God, but they want their wife to submit to them. And that is why marriages are struggling. I want to encourage the men at this time, whether you are single or married, submit to God. God's plans for you are good plans, not evil. And God wants to give you the expected end. When you submit to God, it becomes easy for your wife to submit to you. So the Bible is saying there that the man should, the husband should submit, should love her. So the next verse, so that he might, just as Jesus gave himself for the church, so that he might sanctify the church having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word of God, so that in turn he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that the church will be holy, set apart for God and blameless. The next verse says, Even so, husbands should and are morally obligated to love their own wives, they, like as their own bodies he who loves his own wife loves himself so the bible is saying these are things that husbands have to do and all that and all that so because of time let me stop there so five hard truths about marriage number one i already said something about it when i was reading the scriptures number one marriage is work marriage is work there are things you will need to do marriage you have to work on your marriage marriage is not going to work on itself it's not going to just go smoothly automatically it's not going to go smoothly without you doing some things putting things in place doing your own part you have work to do the woman has work to do the man has work to do for the marriage to work so marriage is work and you have to work on it daily it's not something you do once and you forget about it and you expect that well let it continue working no it's not going to happen that way you have to work on your marriage daily every day what are some of the things you need to do to work on your marriage or maybe you are asking what are, how do I work on my marriage you will need to show love to your spouse. You will need to be patient with your spouse. You will need to watch your words. It's not everything that comes to your mind that you say. Some people have big mouths. I mentioned something like that in one of my novels with this ring. The woman is, um, what did I put there? I think the woman is a lawyer or something. But nothing is too big. For her mouth to, for her small mouth to say 
She's small, small in stature. But nothing is too big for her small mouth to say. She will just open her mouth and begin to sp spill out words. Some people are like that. That is not how to work on your marriage. You can't have a good marriage that way. To have a good marriage, you will need to watch your words. Check your words. Let me also say that Satan will suggest things to your mind. Satan will bring things to your mind. This, say this. Don't take it. Don't take that. Um, you have to claim your right. You have a right. Satan will suggest things to you. You are supposed to shut the devil down. You are supposed to tell the devil to get away from you. And you can do it. You have authority. I said last Sunday, and I will say it again. You have authority over the devil. If you don't use your authority, nothing is going to happen. Satan will just continue to play in your life. Toss you around. Push you here and there. You are supposed to use your authority and stop the devil. So you have to watch your words. It's not everything that comes to your mind. Sometimes some people say in marriage, I hate you. I hate you. I have, it has never even occurred to me to use such a word. I hate you. For what? Biko, for what? You marry that person because you loved that person. So if challenges come, you will deal with them. You are not supposed to use such words. I hate you. Never, don't let it ever come out of your mouth. Are we together? Don't let such words come out of your mouth. Some wrong things will come to your mind. Don't say them. Let the word of God let the, and the spirit of God control your life. Also, watch your attitude. I'm talking about the first hard truth. The topic is five hard truths about marriage. And I'm talking about the first one. Marriage is work. So watch your words also. Watch your attitude. Be quick to forgive. Aside all that, you see, another thing you need to do is, I said marriage is work. You will, there will be times when you need to wake up early to do one thing or the other for your family. Marriage is work. But just rely on God and do it joyfully. And when you pray, when you pray, the Holy Spirit will strengthen you. And for example, I... I, I needed to, I was preparing for this program. I was praying and all of that. But that does not mean I will not cook in my family. Last, uh, last uh, night, I was in the kitchen making uh, baking meat pie. I know how to uh, bake meat pie. I know how to do meat pie and it's delicious. My children love it and I just do it sometimes. So, but I'm, I'm also doing ministry and I'm writing and I'm still cook at home. When you put your trust in God, when you rely on God, He will help you. And you are doing it joyfully. You are doing it joyfully and all of that. So, marriage is work. You, sometimes you will need to wake up early. You will need to do house chores. You will need to provide. You will need to go to work. You go to work and you come back home and you still have to do some things. And if you are married, of course, your spouse will want uh, uh, in sexual intimacy, sex. And you still have to do it. And you cope. I would, maybe if I don't, if I'm not able to talk about that today, I will talk about it next Sunday. How you are, you'll be able to cope. There's nothing you cannot pray about. If you, are, if you are tired and you find it difficult to enjoy intimacy with your spouse, you are like, I'm tired. I want to sleep. Leave me alone and all of that. Instead of saying that, you rely on God. There's nothing you cannot pray about. When you pray, Somehow God will make your body to respond. You are able to plan yourself properly so that you enjoy what God uh, wants you to enjoy in the marriage. So marriage is work. You will need to cook, clean the house, provide, protect, and all of that. But you can do it. I'm saying this not to scare you. I'm telling you that you can do it. Do your part and leave the rest to God. All right? Mm, there's a lot to be said, but let me move on. Let me move on. Number two, the second truth about marriage. 
there are some things that your spouse will not be able to do for you. Sometimes some people are getting married and they are like, they expect the husband, the spouse to do to be able to do everything for them. They need this, the spouse will do it. They need that. This, my wife will do it. My husband will do it. There are some things that your spouse will not be able to do for you. That is the second hard truth about marriage. And that is because your spouse is but a human being. If you're a woman, if you are the wife, your husband is but a man. That means he's just a human being. He's limited. And if you're a man, the husband, your wife is but a woman. The person is limited. The person is not God. So there, there are some things that your spouse will not be able to do for you. For example, about money. Some women want to depend on their husband for everything. A good husband will try his best to provide for his family. A good husband, a sensible husband, a godly husband will provide for his family, will save and take care of his family. A good husband, a godly husband will not push his family into financial crisis. That's a good husband. However, if for some reasons the husband is trying but he's not able to provide enough, the wife is supposed to trust God to meet her needs. The wife is supposed to trust God to meet her needs. In ministry, I've been in ministry for some years now, and there were times that, or even now, maybe sometimes I don't have a car. I, there, there has never been a time that I asked my husband that we must have a car. It's not a problem to me. When I'm serving God, God will provide. I put my trust in God and God provides. He makes a way for me. I am okay. He provides. He provides. Another thing I do, I hope we are together. Those, who are, those online, I hope we are together. Another thing I do, if I, for example, I believe in sowing seeds. I give clothes out. I give my clothes out. And I, re, I have come to realize, and I mentioned it in one of my novels. Uh, uh, no, not novel. In one of my books, God's Words to Women in Ministry. God's Words to Women in Ministry. I mentioned it. That as a woman in ministry, if you don't have enough clothes, from, the, from what you have, wash them, make them clean, and sow seed. You can give some of them out. You will be surprised and amazed at how quickly God will bring clothes back to you. God will, you, will just, you will just find that clothes are coming back to you. People are giving you clothes. It works. You can try it. I give clothes out and clothes keep coming back. And sometimes I'm like, ah. Latibosibo, where did this come from? I just have them. Because God is faithful. God is faithful. So, if you have needs, put your trust in God. Apply um, biblical principles. The principles of the word of God and they will work for you. Don't put pressure on your husband for something. Put your trust in God. Let God provide. And what God does not provide for me, I don't bother myself about it. If I need something for the ministry and I pray and I don't get it, that means God, it's not yet, that means God does not want me to have it yet. I, just, I don't bother myself. If I ask someone to do something for me, for example, this online program, if I, need, if I need something to be done and the person to do it is not available, I don't bother. I don't begin to cry or get upset. I will just do it. The way I can do it. And God will still be glorified. I am working for God. God will take care of me. So let God take care of your needs. As a man. As a woman. Your spouse will not be able to do everything for you. Let's see an example. Genesis chapter 30. Let's look at it on the screen. Genesis chapter 30 verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 30 verses 1 and 2. When Rachel saw that she conceived no children for Jacob, she envied her sister and said to Jacob, 
She said to her husband, Give me children or else I will die. Verse 2. Jacob became furious with Rachel, his wife. And Jacob said, Am I in the place of God who has denied your children? Who has denied you children? So, Jacob, uh, Rachel uh, went to Jacob, her husband, and said, Give me children or else I will die. Number one, such a statement is negative, it is wrong. She made a statement, or else I will die. There are people also who say such careless words. If you don't do this, or if, if God does not do this for me, I will die. If I don't receive this, I will go crazy. Please, I beg you in the name of God, don't let such words come out of your mouth. If you have been saying them, stop saying them. It is wrong, it is negative, it is of the devil. That is Satan putting words in your mouth. Rachel said, give me children or else I will die. And she eventually died. By the time Joseph became the prime minister and he was doing well, Rachel was long dead. She was dead. She was, she was not there to enjoy the fruits of her labor. Don't say such words. Don't say such words. And then um, Jacob became angry with her. And he gave it back to her. He, he retorted. He said, am I in the place of God? And that could have led to a big problem in their marriage. So in marriage, there are some things that your spouse will not be able to do for you. You are supposed to pray. When Isaac married Rebekah, Rebekah did not conceive also. She did not conceive for some time. And the Bible says in Genesis 25 verse 21 that Isaac prayed for his wife. Isaac prayed and Rebekah conceived. Pray about everything and God will help you in Jesus' name. So today we are talking, we, we started talking about five hard truths about marriage. Number one, the first hard truth is that marriage is work. The second hard truth is that there are some things that your spouse will not be able to do for you. You will need to put your trust in God. Pray about everything and you will be fine. In Jesus' name, amen. I would also like to encourage you to read, I would like to encourage you to read um, one of my books, 30 Things Husbands Do That Hold Their Wives. 30 Things Wives Do That Hold Their Husbands. They will greatly bless you. And if you have any question at all, send it on WhatsApp and I will answer it the following Sunday as uh, God helps us. This program is for one hour so that um, we just do it quick, quick. But um, I'll try to answer the questions, whatever questions you may have. Hallelujah. And try to share the link with um, your friends and loved ones so that they can join and be blessed. There's a lot to be said. And if you have questions about ministry also, whether you are a man or a woman and all of that, parenting, whatever, send your question and God will give you answers of peace in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I will stop here today. Um, if you have not given your life to Jesus, if you have not given your life to Jesus, I'd like to encourage you to do so. And so I present Jesus to you. I give you Jesus. Without Jesus, you will not be able to do these things. The strength will not be there. You can't do them without Jesus. And even if you try to practice them and all of that, you can't have the right results. And then the Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So if you try to practice them and you, say, and you are able to save your marriage and you have money and all of that, but you are, the person is not a Christian, then at the end of the day, the person is going to lose his soul or her soul. But that is not God's plan for you. God wants everything to go right for you. God wants you to have joy to radiate his glory. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. We will take um, our closing song now. We will take our closing song. God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. God can do anything. He is Lord. Don't mind my voice. God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. God can do anything. He is Lord. 
If you can unmute yourself, you can unmute yourself and let's sing it together. God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. God can do anything. He is Lord. Again, God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. God can do anything. He is Lord. One more time. God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. God can do anything. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. I pray for you. God will help you in Jesus' name. For with God, all things are possible. God will make all things possible for you. He will help you. He will guide you. You will have victory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Satan will not have the last say in your life. Circumstances of life will not have the last say. You will not be afraid. And where you have been afraid, I command that fear to depart in the mighty name of Jesus. And let courage come. Let empowerment come. Let transformation come. Let the power of God surround you. And give you your testimonies. And give you your miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are single. You will get married. God will guide you. God will connect you. Divine intervention. Divine connection for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever your spouse is. I pray you will meet in Jesus name. And for those who are married. God will help you. Satan is a liar. Concerning your marriage. Satan is a liar. The devil is a liar. And we rebuild the devil concerning your marriage in Jesus' name. Concerning your marriage, concerning my marriage. We rebuild the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will give us victory in Jesus' name. All will be well. And as the year is fast coming to an end, you will not end with this year. No family member of yours will end with this year in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. If you have questions, send your questions on WhatsApp. And I would, uh, they will, it will get to me and I will attend to it. God bless you. Enjoy your week. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.